This conference will now be recorded. Great. Well, welcome again to another Technology Review Council meeting. Uh, I'm going to just do a very quick little preface because as we've been going through this uh, COVID situation, I think all of us are trying to react to it in different ways based on our businesses and so on. But my gut feeling, and we're watching a lot of things happening with regards to things like furloughs and layoffs and so on, I think what we're going to see coming out of this is a tremendous surge in recruiting. I mean, probably unprecedented because it'll be, we have some 30 million people that have been registered for unemployment insurance. That's an, that's an incredible number to hear about. But as things start leveling out and getting, getting us back to work, if you will, we hope to see that kind of resurgence in the recruiting. So we're very, very pleased today to have uh, Jeff Wagman. And Jeff, I'll let you introduce yourself as you go through this, but Aaron, it's as you can see on the uh, the uh, slide, it's a smart employee referral platform. I've had the chance to view it. You saw my email coming through. I think you're gonna be very entertained, but if, like always, the uh, the perspective of what we wanna do here is share our, our perspectives with, with uh, Jeff as we see him demonstrate and talk about the product, the relevancy, if you will, questions we may have about things like the implementation and such, all those wonderful things that we've, uh, the Technology Council has become the representation of a tough place to, a, a tough crowd to, to present to, if you will. That probably sets Jeff up for a bad day. But uh, all the way around, like I say, we are, we're here to really give Jeff some feedback. And, and Jeff, certainly as you've mentioned to me, you'll answer any and all questions. So everything's on the table and I'm just gonna let you get started. So it is yours, sir. Perfect. Hi guys, um, I'm Jeff Wagman. Uh, I work over at Aaron. I'm responsible for our sales organization. Um, so we're still a newer company. Um, we've been around now for almost two, yeah, two and a half years. So why Aaron started, um, it kind of came out of a, um, a venture fund. And the idea was like, there are a couple of the portfolio companies we're looking at, um, how do we hire better? How do we hire faster? How do we kind of screen through all the applications that come in? And then they started looking at us so like, our employees are our best advocates and identifying who those right people are that's a good fit in an organization. And they have a very strong understanding also of the talent and the ability that they're able to deliver on. So we started looking at like, how do we do that? And we started looking at the employee referrals. Um, and started digging deeper and we realized that a lot of the referrals that happen today are through introductions. Um, they happen at networking events, exchanging of business cards, um, conferences and passing after day two of knowing someone. You're like, you know, check out our website. You might be a good fit. And what happens is they check out the website. They apply. They send the URL to that individual. The individual receives it. And the next thing you know, like they're kind of trying to pass it around. And what we've seen, though, with that is that the number of people action times completing those applications, it, it drops significantly. And so we looked at what's on the market today. So we started looking at um, now our competitors and what they're doing and realized that a lot of the people within the industry focus more on the metrics, the big picture, um, and help with kind of the reporting to provide clarity and making things a little bit easier. And so what we realized is that the bread and butter of a strong employer referral program, it's actually the focus on the employee engagement. And it's how do you engage employees from home or from anywhere in the world to be a part of your recruitment efforts. So that's why we created Aaron. Um, and what we focus more on is the referral side. I think I'm just gonna better yeah, just kind of like dive into the demo if you kind of understand how this all works. Um, so let me put my iPhone over here. So um, what Aaron is, is to, uh, there's a couple sides to it. So we focus on the admin side, which is um, the directors of talent acquisition, hiring managers, TA specialists, recruitment teams. And then we also focus on the employee side, how to make it easier. So we have um, a few different ways of making it easier. We have an iOS app. We have an Android app. We're also based on the web, and we also have the ability to completely white label everything to a company's brand and colors. So as you see in this top left of my screen on my phone um, is this Aaron logo or app. So 
we're going to go through a an employee experience. And then once I get through that, I'll transition over to the admin side. So from the employee experience, when I want to make a referral, I can click into here. What I'm looking at right now is the dashboard. So this dashboard is really showing you as an employee how many referrals I've made for the year, um, my ranking, which helps with gamification. I'll also be able to see things also like the number of open jobs at the organization and be able to have the referral policy in the back pocket, which is I think a big thing for a lot of different companies um, because everyone's always asking, how does our program work again? What, what does this look like? Um, so as an employee, when I click into this jobs tab, I will be able to see all of the available open positions. I can see also the location, the department, the referral bonus and mount. I can see a wide variety and set filters to make sure I'm seeing the correct thing. But when we go into this sales position, for example, oops. Or we go into this director of CM marketing. When we click into this tab side, um, when you guys post the positions from your ATS, all that information is gonna populate right here for your employees to see. They'll be able to learn more about that position. And they can also refer themselves and say, I'm interested, which is gonna help with internal mobility and to be able to move up within the organization. But what we're really here to see is this really this big one button that makes a huge difference. Just refer someone. So as an employee, all I need is three pieces of information. I need the candidate's first name, their last name, and then either their email address or phone number. So I'm going to put in my dad's name, refer him for this position. I'll also put in his email address. Oops. And now I can also do two things. I can add a note and let Mike know why I'm referring him for the position. And I can also provide a note for the hiring contact to understand why I'm referring Mike for this job. When I submit this referral, it's going to send Mike an email. It's going to look like this. That will look like this. So where you see Besco, um, it will be your company's logo, branding, and everything. When I view the referral and open up the link, it's going to drive that candidate now to be able to accept the referral or decline the referral. When they accept the referral, they can now view the job and apply. And when they click on this, it's going to direct that candidate to apply directly into the ATS um, to begin moving forward uh, with the application. So that's that experience. So Jeff, you are going to take questions as we go through this? Correct, yep. OK, OK, thanks. Any questions? Yeah. OK, so um, now within the employee side, um, a big thing we started looking at, too, is like, where where is the transparency in the referral that I've made? Um, how do I kind of know what's going on? So. We started looking at the ability for the employees to actually be able to track the progress um, of the candidate of the individual that they referred for a job. So we can see, for example, Mike Wagman has accepted the referral. We can also see, for example, Timothy was hired for a position. We can also see, for example, Mike Smith uh, has not accepted the referral. But it's providing a lot more transparency for the employee not to be so nervous about making that referral. Or if they see that um, uh, candidate that they referred for the position out in public at some kind of event. And they go, hey, whatever happened, um, they're not caught off guard, like I'm not really sure. Now they have that in the back pocket to know what's going on. When you also, a nice thing about this is that you're able to send push notifications directly to the employee of your organization. So when you guys post a new job, um, you can notify the whole entire organization, notify by region, by department, notifications all. So it's really tying things nicely together. So that, from a high level, is a mobile view. Questions? So before you leave that, uh, Jeff, so as you're showing us the ability to post a brand new position and notify, as you said, you could do that company-wide, you could do, let's say, maybe department-wise. Any 
I want to say best practices thinking around that. In other words, certainly if I have a position, if I'm a uh, nationwide company, I may want to just say, well, the people in Pittsburgh would probably know uh, the people in Pittsburgh that I want to refer to if it's, it's got to be that. But does that limit you or what, what are you seeing your clients doing with that kind of capability? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, yeah, that's a great question. So right now what we're seeing is that they're sending um, a notification out to um, all employees. So everyone's engaged. Uh, we've been listening more about what um, what that means though. So we started creating actually this new feature that'll be launched at the end of uh, May. Um, and what that feature is, is actually a communication center. So it's actually providing a lot more custom ability to tailor notifications. Um, what's been happening with the individuals that are not, are using our software or have recruitment information before, they've usually been sending um, weekly internal email campaigns, um, sending things through Slack, um, breaking up things by department. What we've also have seen um, when some of these companies is that um, the head of recruitment works hand in hand with the director um, of the positions that are trying to fill for that side of the business and trying to identify the best way to encourage that incentive um, has been a big piece on that side. Okay, and uh, kind of a general question, but most HR systems these days will also include not only employees, if you will, but if you will, workers, end of sense, the, the workforce, contractors, mm -hmm. temporary, and so on. Do you make any restrictions whatsoever in, in having those people both seeing this I, I i don't know that employers would pay a referral but i love the idea that if i'm a contractor and i see a position that's opening up it may not be for me but i have a, a, a significant network uh is that yeah. is that available and, and how is that being used if at all today yeah great question so um what we've seen on our side is that anyone that that organization has under like kind of type, type of payroll um, they break up that candidate into a different class or different department. And what we've seen actually have happened is that um, they've actually, some of the companies have changed their referral program to actually include um, these consultants or contractors to be a part of it um, because they're trying to make it more like inclusive and allowing for different perspective. And that has actually been a huge piece to it. We've seen some of these contractors actually make a ton of referrals because they were hired to do a good job and they've done a good job and now they, the organization trusts that opinion of that contractor um, on the referral side. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to show any more questions, guys. Okay. Let's, let me pull up my other side of this. So we're still in the employee view and employee experience. So the employee will be able to have browse jobs, my referrals, my contacts, um, same exact experience from mobile to web. You'll be able to see all the positions. Um, you can also organize the positions based on where you're located. When you click into a job as well, we also have the ability to refer someone um, and also attach a resume through the web application. You can also share the link across social medias um and we now have the ability for url tracking so if you post a job um, on linkedin and someone within your network clicks on that and then follows through you're able to track the source of that referral as well oh okay that's cool and then you also yep and then you're also okay. able to see how much you've earned uh the total as well and kind of making sure everyone's aligned so that from yeah go ahead move yeah it, it, it brings one other question. You were showing the fact that I could track the referrals I have made and mm -hmm. how that progresses through the, the, the whole recruiting process. But what if a position gets hired and, and gets closed, but it's not a referral that I made? In other words, um, so I don't want to refer somebody to a, a position that's already just been closed. And, and how, how does that, that interaction work? It sounds like it's driven by the ATS. Correct. Yeah. So we have. Um, we have a lot of different integrations, a lot of different ATSs and how they operate. Um, so majority of ATSs that we work with today, you're able to post a job and it'll automatically push to Aaron. 
You're able to close a job within your ATS, automatically closes from Aaron. You're able to update the statuses within the ATS and it'll also trigger over into Aaron, such as hired or not hired. Um, if hired within your ATS, you can push that over here. And then you can also adjust the start date, which will then begin allowing for better tracking on when the referral bonus we paid out. Um, so we have a lot of smooth integrations and also do a lot of custom integrations based off of the organization and what the requirements are of their business. Um, we take a very hands-on approach when working with clients. For those clients that are using your product, do they feel that there's a little bit of an overhead? So then in a sense, you're another database that needs to be maintained with both people I've referred and the fact that the position is open or closed or the status of that. So you're kind of pushing stuff out to another place where the, it needs to be very well coordinated. And, yep. and is that an overhead to the client or is that an overhead that you absorb? Yep, so our system handles all of that. So it's all automated. Um, there's a, there's a huge time saving on the management of um, referral programs today by switching with us. Um, so traditionally, a lot, of customer, a lot of clients sometimes track things within the ATS or they manually track it in a giant Excel sheet that gives some people nightmares. Um, so you're able to track all of that. So really like your ATS is your ATS. We're like a plugin and we're more focused on the employee side and engaging that. So you're really managing everything from your ATS side. And then we take care of like all the notifications, all the information passing through correctly to make sure everyone's involved and what needs to happen. And it's all automated on that side. Great. Any questions from the audience in general, please feel free to, to ask Jeff whatever you wish. Okay, keep on cooking. Perfect. So that- oh, hi, um, uh, quick question. Just a quick question. Um, this yeah. is Noreen. Hello, everyone. Um, just a quick question on um, allocation and setup and configuration on the back end of, say, people director and above um, that really don't get monetary value, but say they can it push to donate to, say, uh, a nonprofit or some other um, kind of entity rather than a cash amount? Yep. Great question. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, so how we break that up, um, I'll kind of skip over this. Going right to the admin side for you to see this. So this is a feature called Bonus Builder. Um, what the Bonus Builder means is that um, based off of whatever position that you post, for example, like director or, or a wide variety of things, you can actually attach the bonus amount correctly to that position that's aligned with. So if the director has um, a, a $2,000 referral bonus or some kind of different payout period, you can have at that and associate a $1,000. When you post the positions from the back end from the ATS, our system will automatically connect that and link. And then within your referral policy itself, we will tailor that so that that information is then passed over and reported on so that the person that will like pay the bonus out or the, the amount goes the correct way. Gotcha. And I see that what you have there too, Jeff, is uh, we'll get to this screen in a little bit more detail, but it looks like I can I can time out including a referral, not a referral bonus, but a signing bonus type of thing. It looked like after 90 days, I'm going to pay something to the candidate. So that's yep. all kind of handled with it. And I'm sure that sends stuff off to payroll automatically. Correct. Yep. Automatically, it depending on perspective. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yep, great question, it does. Um, well, we, uh, I'll, I'll show this right now actually. So on the admin side, um, what you're looking at today is that we started to realize, okay, employee referrals are the best way to attract top talent. All right, now the next question is, how do you retain that talent all the way through? And how do you stagger out the bonuses and track them correctly? So what you're seeing right now, um, for example, is that if a referral is successful in this default group, that employee will receive $500. If that candidate is still at the organization and so is the employee, then the employee will receive another $1,000. We are also seeing, as Nov just mentioned, kind of like a referral or a bonus for joining the organization. Mm -hmm. If that candidate makes it past 90 days, you can make it 250, you can make it $100,000. I mean, it's up to you on what you wanna do on the referral amount, but you can extend those bonuses down. Um, 
And the reason that we did is, is because we're focusing on tenure, right? How do you retain this talent? Um, and we realized that kind of trailing out the bonuses keeps the golden carrot out just a little bit farther to could have individuals continue progressing forward to stay. Great, very nice. Hey, Jeff, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. So after you put this system in, my name's Greg. Um, Hi, Greg. Do you see more referrals coming through overall? Do you have any metrics of the year before the system, we had 10 referrals the year once after we put the system in, we had 35? Yeah, I do. I'm going to pull something up for you so you can visually see it. Um, we have a client uh, based in San Francisco. Um, I'm going to share this one and other example as well. Um, between January and August of last year, they only had um, 18 referrals. Within 90 days of implementing our system into their um, into their system, they went from 18 to 270 referrals in 90 days, and they were able to hire 27 um, of those individuals from those hires, and they were still continuing to um, hire individuals from those referrals. That sounds Sounds pretty impactful. Um, one more question. One more question is: So, are more companies? How do you deal with companies that don't have referrals? I'm assuming some people referral bonuses. Does that have a big impact on how the implementation goes and the effectiveness? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, yes and no. What we've seen is that companies that don't have referral bonuses or things along those lines. They start implementing and experimenting on our software to figure out what encourages it. Um, we have rewritten on our side with organizations um, their referral programs. We've seen hundreds of them to date. So we kind of try to understand their industry, what motivates their employees to actually partake. Uh, and then we work with them to design a referral program that makes sense um, for the organization. Did I answer that question correctly, Greg? Yep, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and Greg, you brought up an excellent question. So I hadn't thought of a, a program that's a referral program that wouldn't have money behind it, but to your point, many people might just say, you know, just refer people, that's what we would like you to do. But I like what you said, Jeff, that people can experiment with that and see the motivation points, either timing, amounts, whatever that that major metric is going to be that's going to tip things over. That's really kind of cool. Um, yeah. I, I guess the, the, the begging question for those of us that are data junkies like myself. So as you're using or your clients are using this, will you have metrics that will relate to amounts being paid out, maybe even the seasonality of the hiring patterns, and if you will, the retention, i.e. that last one you mentioned, you know, we're concentrating on keeping people and retaining them for a longer period of time and i don't know if you have any stats from your your clients at this point in time you may within let's say a year or so that says you know in instituting this is great and we've done some tweaking on the referral program and this has been the magic set of numbers of, of bonuses and the payouts and so on that have really made a difference in the retention perspective mm -hmm. yeah that's that's a great question um we are in that this is actually pretty exciting. So we're in the middle of actually creating um, more in-depth dashboards and understanding the, um, the dashboards and the metrics that you guys want to see. Um, we offer a lot today on our side, um, but what we realize that a lot of these eight, a lot of the clients that we start to work with, they're extremely blind and kind of limited to what their ATS is able to correctly provide them to be able to see within their organization. Um, so now our big focus right now is like, what are these metrics? Like, what is that information? So we're now starting to move into this new phase of being able to build out those correct dashboards. Yeah. Um, and as we've seen from all the SaaS vendors, you're sitting mm -hmm. on a gold mine of, of information. And so in a sense, if I were, let's say a manufacturing company, small business in a geographic area, maybe i'd want to ask you the question as a benchmark what's the what's a typical referral program look like if i don't have one in other words you know let me you help me figure out where to start this process and then i tweak it based on budget and desire and all the other stuff but you're sitting yeah. on on a lot of statistical data that might find 
you'll, you'll find over time that'll be very, very helpful to your clients and as benchmarks. Yeah, and that's the big focus, right? So like our our belief is like, yes, we can give you our software and it will do an okay job um, if you wanna take over the leading of it. Um, but our focus is actually kind of working hand on hand taking a more consultative approach. So we like to work with um, companies that are trying to understand like how, like the percentage of hires from referrals the previous year. Okay, what is the hiring goal for this upcoming year? How many hires would you like from referrals? We like to kind of break out kind of like a year long game plan of like month one, you're trying to get these many referrals. Month two, you're trying to get these many referrals. And we create strategies and work hand in hand on the rollout side. So we'll do things like admin training where we'll focus specifically on the hiring side and making sure that they understand how the system works, why it's important, how to encourage employees to use it and creating incentives and uh, designing programs to be implemented in. And then we do employee training across all organizations. So you could have 100 employees, you can have 225,000 employees with one of our clients. and we will break up trainings um, unlimited really and making them very like tailored to that organization so that it's really kind of like um, a smooth process of a transition over. It sounds like you're also in a position to possibly help to communicate and craft a really you know, significant message if I don't have a referral program and I'm now putting one in. In other words, how do I really sell this? Not, I mean, the obvious uh, draw is gonna be the the dollars, but you know, why yeah. why are we doing this, and what can you do as an employee to, to really help help grow the organization? Yeah, and it's funny. I mean, I mean, it's actually it's not funny, but um, that's how you look at it. There there was an organization that we're working with, and um, they have about originally had about five. They're about four thousand ish employees, and they had about um, a three and a half percent of hires from referrals. And the big question was like, they, they just didn't understand why that was happening. So we're like, okay, like, why don't we go ask those employees why they're not making referrals? And then they realized that a lot of the employees didn't realize that they had an employee referral program mm -hmm. or it's a very cumbersome process. So when they're focusing on like, how do we like engage that side? Um, it, we kind of always focus on like, ask your employees like what they want to see and then kind of take it from that side. Yeah, that's, that's like I say, it's, we always assume that when we do a communication, everybody's been told about it, but as you come through the front door, you miss all this stuff. So for those of us in the audience that are, are HR related practitioners, remember communication is not to be consistent or it's part of the new orient orientation program. So yeah, my, my tip for the day. <laughs> I want to, I want to walk through this as well. So there's a few more things. So, yes. um, Right now, you're looking at managed jobs. So you could add jobs manually through our system. Um, we always push for the ATS integration between our two systems. So when you post the positions, they're automatically gonna populate here. You can go into this um, operations analyst position and you can update statuses automatically. Um, you can filter through things. The big piece as well is that you can track all of the referrals of the organization. So this is where it comes to kind of like automating that side. So you'll be able to see like the candidate's name, um, the position that they were referred for, the date on, the bonus amount, who within the organization made the referral and the statuses. A big thing that we focus on as well as we talk about kind of like the hand-in-hand -hand partnership is we start tracking like each month, like you're down by two and a half percent on the referrals how can we increase that number and work with you and kind of do like monthly check-ins or bi-weekly check-ins to make sure that your KPIs are staying on point. Mm. Do you have any companies that are using the dashboard in a way to, well, other than the, man, the monetary aid reward, kind of, you know, the employee of the month, uh, you know, Jeff has referred uh, 40 people to our company and we're very proud of his efforts and things of that nature. So I don't know if they, yeah. they use that that way or if it makes any sense to do it that way. Yeah, you're, you're able to track all that. So you're able to track, for example, Michael Scott obviously is trying to become a full-time TA acquisition person. <laughs> so he, 245 <laughs> positions um, been referred for. You can focus on like top departments that are making referrals as well. 
Um, mm-hmm. So you're, you're getting that inside scoop and we've seen a lot of companies um, communicate that, which also encourages other employees to partake that this is actually a really real program and bonuses actually are being paid out. Gotcha. Looking, looking at the, the, the dashboard you have here, the accepted referrals versus referrals, so that shows that five were not accepted. Is that what I'm reading that correctly? Uh, On the far right? Right over here. More. Yeah. Yeah, this is tracking the number of referrals. So what you're seeing it's down from the previous month. Okay, gotcha. And, and I'm sure you're tracking referrals offered versus referrals accepted. In other words, you know, how... How good are we at doing this? Are we picking the right people? Are going to say, nah, I'm not even interested in accepting that situation. You've probably got a lot of stats sitting here that we could we could play with in terms of you know crafting a different message. I will say this, and I, and again, being a technician, I I'm always apologizing to HR practitioners, but job descriptions are horrible. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, I, I'm seeing much much better efforts towards explanatory, competency based behavior needs all that kind of stuff kind of here's our culture and here's what you want to why you want to come work for us and if those are done then that probably raises acceptance so sometimes the, the acceptance the, the decline of acceptances might be an indication that you really don't have really good job descriptions or a good branding or whatever the case may be out there yeah we, yeah we've seen a lot of rewrites um that's hard. That's a tough question on that side. I do see Steve has um, a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, sure, please. What would an ATS do that the system doesn't? Perhaps starting with the definition of an ATS would help. Yeah, so um, an ATS is an applicant tracking system. So um, the ATS, how I always like to look at it, it's like a giant customer relationship management tool um, for the TA side. So TAs are able to see, for example, all of the individuals that have applied for a position, they're able to track um, the status and how they're moving along correctly within the interviewing process. Within the applicant tracking system, you're able to uh, push jobs to your careers page. You're able to push jobs to um, a wide variety of different job boards that exist on the market. Right. And, you're, and the big focus is making sure that none of the applicants hints are being dropped and the progress is moving forward. When what's different from ours is that um, we're, we don't have the ability to post to um, careers pages. We don't have the ability to do that. Our main focus is more on the engagement side and getting the employees involved in the process. Um, we've just taken it in a very far and in-depth approach to making sure that um, it's an easy process also for admins to be able to manage correctly as things progress. Right, and Steve, just my, there's no, just a quick addition to that. So the compliance side of, of the recruiting side is really contained within the, the side of an ATS. In other words, you know, that you, non-discrimination, uh, capturing, you know, veteran status, gender, all the ethnicity and so on, all those things really sit within an ATS system. And usually when you go to do the actual hire, that's coming from an ATS system that then goes to the onboarding or something over to the HR system. So Aaron really is just an adjunct, an addition to the program, but it seems to work extremely well, well with the ATS. If that, I hope that answers the question as a whole, but that, that was a great definition, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, yeah. No problem. Um, I also want to show you this too. So as general referrals kind of come in, so now I was sure where that employee fits within. Let's say, for example, um, an employee makes a referral or puts someone's name into the hat. Um, when they that individual does that, for example, Susan Smith, um, as the TA side, they can come in here. They can look through this, reach out either by email or phone number. But let's say we find out Susan's a really great fit for a sales position. We can kind of look through our job board and say, oh, she would be a good fit for the sales sales job. Click on this referral, it'll send out the link for Susan to apply and be able to progress forward. The other big thing is that the bonuses. So we realize that um, the bonus tracking can be a little tough. Um, and so what we started focusing on was 
how do we make it easier for recruitment teams, the HR systems to be able to better manage all this information? So we've been actually been able to store everything here. So you'll be able to see things such as um, Jim is expecting the eligibility day for $2,500 bonus to be on 721. Um, you can also update the status as well. When you begin approaching the actual like eligibility day of being able to receive that payout, our system can link it with most of the HRS systems on the market and send that information over to payroll or responsible for overseeing it so that none of the um, bonus amounts are being dropped, which is gonna make the employees super happy because they'll actually be able to receive that full bonus. Steve has another question and actually yeah. it's, a, it's a very good quite one, good one in, in whether or not multiple people could uh, share in a referral bonus. So. We both know Steve. Let's ref Jeff and I will refer him at the same time. Who wins? Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's a great question. So how our system has it today, um, it's the individual who made the referral first. So our system will recognize who that individual is, and then say, for example, Steve, congrats, you beat Nove to the punch. Um, Steve, you're going to receive your referral amount if it's sp spread up. We split referrals a lot as often recruiting as a team thing. Ooh, that's a good approach. Hmm. I'm thinking. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I yeah, I won't give you a solution that. necessarily because that's an offline question, but but yeah. I think let's, I, I, Steve, I think you just gave uh, <laughs> Jeff another <laughs> item to go pursue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, that's, um, that's an excellent thing. So, um, you know, you certainly can open your speaker if you, or your, your microphone if you'd like to just kind of explain a little bit about that because it's very possible the audience would like to know a little bit more about that, the, the team recruiting versus individual. I'm just curious about how that works in a general sense. Yeah, just generally, you know, some, sometimes it's somebody has kind of an initial connection to somebody and, and but there's some there's other people that are also know that person and it's kind of like up to we've actually recently did a three-way split you know somebody we recruited somebody somebody got hired and whatever three months later because all three were really heavily involved in trying to bring this this top talent into our team mm -hmm. we split our referral three ways because right. it took three people to get this one person i would suspect the upside of that situation as well is that because three people really knew and worked in concert to bring that individual and convince them, there's a higher sense of both, uh, not obligation, but retention that says, yeah. I don't want to disappoint these three other people. Exactly. I'm going to take this serious. And I think I would say maybe for the more senior positions, three or four people who know somebody who would be the next CFO or whatever it is. Working together would be interesting. So Jeff, I I think that's a, you know thank you Steve that's a very that's a great feedback mechanism. So <laughs> um, yeah. that, that I'd love to pursue that with you Jeff a little bit. I think there's some some ways in which you could leverage what you've got in place. Yeah, now I'm thinking in my head like what that looks like. That makes a lot of sense yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. actually I'll, I'll give you a little hint. We call it Ooh. a you know you make a fake person or make a fake department and then you figure out who was in there. <laughs> Yeah. But and we'll, we'll figure that out later. That's a techie yeah. question. Great question. Uh, Thank so, you. I mean, at the end of the day, it could be done, you know, back of house. It's just a, it's a check. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the 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 beauty of this, I think, is also for those of us that touch payroll once in a while, uh, payroll gets absolutely bombarded with with these special programs. So the more it is automated, I liked what you were doing, and Jeff, I would want you to finish out a little bit what you're showing here is that. Yeah. I have an, an as an administrator the ability to at least hold up on something. I'm sure that you, if somebody bumps out of the system and terminates before these dates get met, either as an employer or, or as a candidate, you're going to take care of that that side of it as well. But I can actually put a a bit of a hold on some of this stuff. So that's kind of kind of the cool stuff. Yeah, we yeah we have that ability. So. Um depending on how we set things up between the, like how we scope it out with the, our clients, uh, we'll actually have the ability um, to know when an employee leaves the organization. And then it will remove and make sure it's ineligible so that when it does come time to pay out that bonus, our system's already alerting the individual be paying out or the HR system 
to not actually pay out. So if the candidate leaves or the employee leaves, our system will be able to track all of that. Yep. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm gonna show like the, I guess the one big last thing. Um, <laughs> this is my favorite side of it, I think personally, um, but this is where you start focusing more on like the employee engagement and actually having a, a better in-depth look of what's going on. Um, so there's really two ways that we can set things up. We can either do a single sign-on um, or we can focus on just uploading a giant CSV file and structuring it correctly. Um, but the nice piece is, is that you'll be able to see all of your employees um, within your system. You'll be able to see the department that they're in, uh, the job title, also based on the region that they're located in as well. And then what we focused on is this thing right here. So you'll be able to identify the employees who aren't making referrals. You'll be able to start figuring out what is the average number of referral um, department by department per as an employee as a whole over the lifetime of a business. You'll also be able to figure out um, who hasn't logged in and finished creating an account, a wide variety of things. So you can start breaking up kind of your employee group saying active users, passive users, and then users who have not touched it at all. Then you can start targeting those different sections within your business of your employees and say, okay, let's keep focusing on the, the active employees and let's try and pull some of them to our passive employees and try and make them get more engaged in why this is important. And then we start identifying also the employees who are making any referrals and working with them to create solutions to increase that engagement internally. Yeah. So, so Jeff, when, when you started talking engagement, I, I, I wish I'd had a cameras on to see if anybody was really skeptical, but you just explained exactly how many folks in the audience may be using a survey system or happy phases, frowny phases or whatever. But the magic question I always hear is, would you refer somebody to work at, your, at our company? And the answer yeah. is yes or no. Well, I don't need to ask that question any longer. I'm seeing it here. But because maybe I'm a new hire, I would add maybe one other field and that is tenure. How long have I been with the company? Because that might be enough of an, an incentive. So somebody who's been with the company for five years and done no referrals is maybe I want to go talk to and see how they're feeling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I mean, that's a big thing, right? It's like yeah, there, there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of systems that are on the market today, but there's a lot of there's a lot of blindness um, within the solutions, and a lot of solutions do like a really really good job in this one area, but then are weak in this side and. How do you tie that in correctly? I mean, yeah, employee engagements, it's important. Yeah, it'll be even more so as we're coming out of this process, I guarantee it. <laughs> Very yeah. cool. So as did you have other things you wanted to show us or, or are we open for some, some more questions? Yeah, let's open up the questions. Um, I've walked through um, our system at a very high level. Got Does anybody want to more? see anything yeah. particular, any steps or, or general questions? I do have one very quick one that might kick it off, and that is, so how long does it take for me, average-wise, if you will, to put Aaron in place, if I provided I have an ATS system? Yeah, um, so how we break um, the rollouts or the implementation side is that um, the first week, it kind of varies depending on the speed um, you can move at. We move pretty quickly. Um, the first week we focus really on what information do you want passed forth back in between systems? Who are the, who's the hiring team? How is the integration gonna work correctly? Uh, we identify the metrics that you're looking to achieve. Once we start doing that, we start creating the integration, which takes about one week to two weeks. The following week we do admin training. So we get all the admins on, on the same board of how this works. And then we start rolling it out to the employees. Um, so we'll have co-branded materials for you. Um, it could say BESCO plus Aaron or just BESCO alone. Um, and then off to the races as we go. And then we start focusing on this 90 day game plan. And what this 90 day game plan looks like is that we're really checking in like once a week, like how are things going? Are you hitting your numbers? Anything breaking, anything confusing? Did we miss something on our end that you wish we had? And start working with you kind of in hand in hand. By end of 90 days, the system will be able, will be running obviously full force and full functionality. And now we'll start focusing more into maintaining the numbers, keeping that um, engagement going up and the number of pros going up as well. Good deal. 
So, audience, Technology Review Council folks, questions for Jeff. So have you found that 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 um, it's most effective to target the users of the app or a blanket give everybody in the organization the app? I just I'm just I only come from a place of there's a gajillion apps that we're asking our employees to interface with. And, yeah, uh, we we target somewhat selectively who's getting what app because it's just a lot. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, it's a great question. So we kind of break it up in two ways. Um, we, when we sell a license, we kind of sell it um, as an umbrella for the whole entire organization. Um, the When it comes to like really downloading and targeting the employees, we like to kind of break things up um, based off of region and getting like one office or one of the departments all on the same page saying this department's not checked off uh 85 percent of that department has downloaded the app and is active then we'll move on to the next department and the next department and kind of like rolling it out over a few months um and we've seen that to be a pretty successful way of doing it um but it also comes sometimes down to the culture of the organization can blast it out to everyone and have them do it. Um, I don't know that's necessarily the best approach, um, but yeah. How do you currently do it, just a curiosity? We send a, just a giant email saying, hey, anybody got any uh, people they think we ought to look at? And then if you do, <laughs> email it to HR and we'll track it and nobody responds. Yeah. yeah. Our, so they have to email HR directly, then right. be able to uh, create their referral like successfully, quote unquote. Yeah. 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 Or, or or maybe it's not directly HR, but it's through it's through the channels, right? You know, a right. a uh, you know a team member in a particular unit, business unit, project unit would talk to their supervisor, and the supervisor, and it and it works its way towards HR, maybe not directly into HR. But it works its way up the chain into the appropriate place. Right. Yeah. So, this is no, but I, I think, in all honesty, in my, in my general, again, the non practitioner perspective or comment, I think, if you will, that Aaron would represent a piece of our culture as an organization. And I think you want to celebrate, as I was asking earlier and, and Jeff was showing, I can identify the people that are doing the most and celebrating that culture of helping us grow, oh, you know, cool. however you want to put it, oh, yeah. and just kind of go down that same road where I think people's interest, not only from the monetary standpoint, but just being recognized and noted, uh, might be an, another way to just keep pushing people to participate. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I think there's a there's huge value in making it more transparent and organized and add a little bit of gamification going into it and all that kind of stuff. I think there's huge value in it. Yeah, uh, exactly, it's just, exactly. It's just, it's, it's, it's app fatigue, I guess, more than anything else, you know? <laughs> oh, wait, I got to go to this one for that thing. That yeah. app, for that thing. Well, you, you bring up an interesting thing. So the mobile world is a very different situation, but um, can I put myself behind a single sign-on for the web version of this? In other words, can I log into whatever portal my company provides me and get to Aaron? Through yeah, I, let me let me see. I'm really bad at remembering the domain names for some of our clients. So let's hope this works. Uh, it does work. Cool. So you do have single sign-on. Um, you have the ability to um install this correctly within sometimes the applicant tracking system itself that says like log in here to make a referral um through a web application you can also obviously see like the download the app store around to the google play that will mm. drive the traffic um what we also have seen too is uh companies copying the url um going to the footer of their website and then saying employee referral login system or other ways to encourage that driving of traffic. Um, 
Steve, I also want to mention something too um, with our system. What we've seen is that the when you're asking employees to make the referrals, um, are you giving them the correct individuals within those internal emails of like who to reach out to to make the referral for this position with hire? Like, are you providing that email information? Like, how's that work? It's so ad hoc. It's literally just, you got anybody you think would be cool to add to Dome? We mean, I mean, it's not even necessarily, we're looking specifically for this role. I mean, sometimes it is. I mean, obviously we're targeting mm -hmm. some ways, but it's really informal. Yeah. I mean, it's about as informal as it gets. I, hey, I got a buddy who's looking for a job. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Let's interview him. <laughs> yeah. No, That's yeah. It. It's yeah. It's interesting. Well, I, so I think, in all honesty, Steve, if I, you don't mind my making a make quick comment, yeah. just as you said, the informal perspective, it is most definitely your culture to listen when somebody says, I've got a friend looking for a job, what do you think? That's right. Um, and so really, all you're really trying to do is, is kind of put a framework around this and automation that would actually make it faster. But you haven't right. changed your culture to make it happen. I, no. I mean, literally, you're you're 99 percent of there already, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think there's a, a lot of yeah. It just continues to go down to where's the where's the jumping off point to remember? Oh, we have this tool for this thing. Yeah, but right, I think if we can if we can find ways in which to aggregate which is was i i wish i had everything that i had one place for me to go to for all the different versions of messages i get from all different sources including now slack and stuff so yeah, yeah i'm um i'm curious jeff i i, I want to make sure that we're we're watching the time closely enough and i know that yeah. you want to speak a little bit about what both you want to say in terms of the you know hey folks in the trc Here's what, what Aaron is offering right now so that you get that opportunity and we put it on recording for those who might watch this later. So <laughs> I, I didn't want to cut short on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyone that's interested in, uh, I guess, looking at Aaron as a solution to implement, um, we're providing a 20% off on annual contracts. Um, and we're also going to waive uh, the ATS integration fee and also single sign-on. Um, as it's just a thank you for partaking, watching our um, presentation, but also just as an encouragement, as we know, obviously a lot of things are changing um, economically. So we're trying to make things as easy as possible on TA teams. That's very nice of you, thank you. Yeah. Um, this is probably the point where, unless there are some other questions out in the audience, I'd love to ask everybody to kind of give Jeff a shall we say that feedback session. I've got my own opinions, but I'd love to hear from the crowd. Uh, anything you want to, you know, relevancy, ease of use, uh, gee, this is really pretty, doesn't make any sense, whatever the case may be. <laughs> That's the value that we also provide back to the vendors. Yeah, I, I really like the, the interface. I think the web interface sort of looks quite familiar. We've been developing a, a safety tool. Um, app and, and back end. It looks very similar. It's really funny. It's like, oh, cool. um, very nice. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that that looks clean. It seems like it's well organized and um, yeah, it's good looking. It's good looking. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> I, I do have one sort of Delta comment. You That yeah. your landing page had some sort of company like branded logo. And then at the top of this thing, it says Besco. And then it says Aaron. What, well, I'm confused. Oh, the powered yeah. by Aaron? Yeah. So, um, yeah, great question. So, Besco is, so we're able to completely white label our platform to your branding, your coloring scheme. So, it stays oh. on. Yep. So, that logo is a symbol like using yours. We okay. had Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> our lawyer was not happy about that. Legal issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. I see what you mean. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. that would be the branded in this case it would be the dome dome logo got it okay yep gotcha. yep yep exactly any other comments or feedback for jeff 
I will definitely give you my two cents, which is always worth about two and a half cents, but that's okay. <laughs> but, you know, so having seen the product before and certainly having seen it again today and the questions being asked and so on, you know, Jeff, I think what I'm seeing is I think an outstanding automation of the referral program, probably the best one I've seen before, ease of use and so on. What I get very excited about and what I'd love to say, we may be inviting you back eh, down in the, in the near future here. Um, the statistics and the data that you're collecting might be a phenomenal perspective of what the recruiting market looks like at any point in time. Um, I, the referral program aside, the fact that people are connecting and bringing people to jobs or jobs are being offered to. I know if somebody came to me and said, hey, no, we've got a job that we think would be really cool. Wow. That's really that. That's a very special invitation, rather than going out to a job board or getting a recruiter calling me and go, "Ah, oh, you know, I think I've got a job for you. I've got a short order cook here at the McDonald's. Do you think you'd be interested?" Um, so I think the idea of the personalization and the connection back to the company, and if you will, kind of extending the culture through your your app to the individual candidates, is a really dynamic way in which to, to hit the recruiting market. I'll be very curious to see. If you see the uptake in the referral bonuses being paid out faster because of coming out of the situation and what happens in the recruiting market, as I was saying early, I think we're going to see a huge surge in recruiting. Yeah, it's it's changing. We're seeing a huge spike on our side. I mean, once people, I mean, it's it's gross what's going on with employ like the unemployment right now. It's sickening. But um, the part that makes me happy is that. We're seeing a significant uptake in the number of referrals on our platform and people within organizations are reaching out to those individuals and saying, hey, how can we be helpful? And it's driving a lot of brand awareness and a lot of organizations are taking very good care of these referrals and talking with them. And they might not be hiring today, but it's creating goodwill within the organization amongst those employees and bringing a lot of confidence is what we're seeing on that side. And one of the key things you just mentioned, I just triggered that, and that is people who are churning through previous candidates to see if they can match them up with current job openings, you're, you're building that file by vir virtue of this referral. You're not losing that connection. So that's yeah. actually a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, I, I think Nova is going to pass out my email afterwards and I'll have them give myself a number yeah. as well and reach me directly. Will do. Um, they but know how to all find me, so <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> let me know. Yeah. yeah, anything I can do to be helpful, even if it's not the employee referral side, um, just chatting about how to like relook at your program, uh, more than happy to help. If I don't know the question, I'll pass someone to my, along with my team, with my organization, um, and you can ask them directly. Um, as I mentioned, we're taking a very consultative approach and we're just here to help. So I, I appreciate everyone being on this call today. And thank you very much, Jeff. And thank you to the Technology Review Council again. Uh, another wonderfully informative and and, and deeply interesting um, presentation. So again, uh, keep your eyes open. More uh, more invitations coming out over the next couple of weeks. We've got thanks, a very guys. Good schedule. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.